Welcome to the first screencast on the overall large topic, health and disease, which is quite a large, uh, big topic, which will be quite a few screencasts on. This is just an introductory screencast, which looks at the terms health and also disease, and looks at different types of diseases, and looks at different um, pathogenic agents and parasitic agents that can cause infectious disease. Okay, so dealing with the term health, first of all, now we often um, talk about the, the health triangle, um, and so to be healthy, you have to be, have mental well-being, social well-being, and physical well-being. Okay, so that's the first idea. So um, remember, obviously, health is a term that it, uh, your everyday uses of English will give you a, a, an image of what it actually means. But in terms of biology and medicine, it's got a specific um, definition, and it involves having a mental, social, and physical well-being. Okay, so remember, you need to be able to remember that. And another facet is that you would be free from disease. And I'll come back and look at that term, disease, in a second. Okay, so the sort of things that uh, somebody that has full health is that you would expect a person to be capable of carrying out physical and mental tasks expected of society. Um, you'd expect them to be well-fed and have a balanced diet. Okay, you expect them to be happy and have a positive outlook, which would all be dealing with the mental well-being. And you'd expect them to be suitably housed with proper sanitation and well integrated in society, which would be all to do with social well-being. Okay, so that defines um, all of those things. Okay, so um, physical would really be this, um, and physical would be that. Um, Mental would be that, and then social would be these two. Okay, now looking at the disease aspect of this, what is a disease? It's a malfunction of the body or mind that causes some form of symptoms which impacts on your physical, mental, or social well being, i.e., your health. Okay, now there are a number of subcategories of disease that I want to look at now. Okay, so the first type of disease that we're going to look at is called infectious disease. And these are caused by pathogens or parasites. And we'll look at those terms in more detail on the next slide. Pathogen or parasite. Put. Okay, and the other thing aspect about them is they can be passed between individuals. Or a more complicated term for that is sometimes used is communicable. Okay, can be communicated between individuals. Communicable. Okay, and the other subcategory. Um, of an infection of, of disease would be non infectious disease. And these are caused by some environmental factor. Okay, so those those would be or some sort of could be a nutritional uh, nutritional uh, deficiency. We could I suppose catch, characterize that as a environmental factor. Okay, um, so those and um, the other key aspect about these is they are non communicable or cannot be passed be passed between individuals. Okay, so examples of infectious disease up here. Uh, infectious disease would be all the sort of viral infections that we get, colds, flus, um, the uh, various other diseases we're going to look at in more detail later on, like tuberculosis, HIV, malaria, would all be examples of infectious diseases. Okay, whereas non-infectious diseases could in involve 
environmental diseases, which could be, we could um, talk about deficiencies and malnutritions we looked at in the last topic. Okay, so um, the uh, uh, CHD, okay, would be uh, perhaps an example of a, a non-infectious disease, which could be caused by the environment, the food that we eat. Okay, um, or well, it could be a genetic disorder. Okay, so some people are genetically more predisposed to heart disease than others, so it could be a genetic input there, or it could be something like uh, cystic fibrosis or Huntington's chorea. Uh, could be an example of a genetic disorder, which would be a non-infectious disease, and these cannot be passed on between individuals. Now, the other distinction we need, we often come across when we talk about disease, which you should be aware of, is the distinction between acute and chronic. Okay, and essentially this means there's a short-term disease. Okay, which is often curable, and a chronic disease is a long-term. long-term disease which are often not curable, they can often be um, uh, treated and controlled but not necessarily curable okay so those these occur over a long term okay so be aware of the difference between acute and chronic disease as well as the difference between infectious and non-infectious disease okay so that finishes the first slide on health and disease. Moving on to the second slide. The second slide uh, requires us to define and discuss the meanings of terms parasite and pathogen. I'll define both uh, the terms parasite and pathogen first of all and then I'll discuss the definitions. Okay so parasites okay these are organisms that live in or on another living organism and that um, organism we call the host and causes it harm. Okay, the harm is caused by competing with the host for nutrition. And there are two subcategories of parasites, ectoparasites, and these are things that live externally. Okay, so something like a head louse uh, would be an example of an ectoparasite, all those ticks that you have to remove from your dogs in, in the summer. Okay, would be an example of an ectoparasite, or an endoparasite is the ones that live internally, so tapeworms in the gut, um, as well as a plasmodium parasite, um, which causes malaria, would be examples of endoparasites. Okay, whereas a pathogen is an organism that causes disease. And they live by taking nutrition from the host, but cause damage in the process. Okay, and there are various ones: the bacteria, fungi, viruses, and protoctists. And we'll talk about those in a minute. First of all, obviously, the, the definitions of pathogens and parasites are very, very similar, and in some respects it's very difficult to, to, to distinguish between them, okay, because it sounds as if um, the, uh, the parasites cause some form of uh, damage as well as the, the pathogens, okay. So um, there are some pathogens that don't necessarily cause disease per se, um, so for example, um, uh, so certain um, blood-sucking um, pathogens, um, would ectoparasites, sorry, blood-sucking ectoparasites don't actually cause disease. All they do is remove um, blood, um, um, and obviously that causes harm, but it's not actually going to cause you a disease unless they remove large amounts of blood. Okay, whereas pathogens, all of the idea of all pathogens is that they will all cause disease. Okay, there are some uh, crossovers, so some people suggest that parasites are restricted to um, organisms which are either protozoans or arthropods or some form of um, worms, um, um, so platyhelminths or whatever. Um, so that, that that's another a distinguishing feature, whereas pathogens tend to be very much microorganisms, okay, so viruses and bacteria, um, whereas pathogens are the larger um, organisms, okay, so that can be another way that some people distinguish between pa pathogen and parasite, okay, so that's discussing the differences and similarities between these two definitions, okay, going to dealing with pathogens, okay, bacteria would be um, what we would consider very much a pathogen, okay, they're prokaryotes, which um, reproduce rapidly, 
and they tend to release poisonous toxins which give you symptoms of illness. Okay, examples cholera and tuberculosis would be two things caused by bacteria. Fungi, um, a ringworm and athlete's foot are caused by these, uh, where the hyphae of the fungi grow through skin and feed on feed on the material in the skin. Okay, and then viruses actually invade cells and hijack the genetic machinery. And I'll look at that in more detail when we start to study the HIV virus. Okay, as an example of a virus. Okay, but the common viruses that we tend colds and flus are caused by viruses. Okay, remember viruses cannot be treated with antibiotics. Antibiotics are there for the treatment of bacteria solely. Okay, so they don't treat anything. So only bacterial infections can be treated with antibiotics. Okay, so never suggest the treatment of any form of viral infection with an antibiotic because they're not effective on viruses. And then we have protoctists, okay, which are single-celled eukaryotic organisms. Um, and a lot of these can cause disease as well and therefore would be considered pathogens, but um, in some respects they're called parasites as well. So amoebic dysentery, which is amoeba uh, living in the, um, in the colon, um, would um, cause this dysentery um, in many countries. And then the one that we're going to study in a lot of detail is malaria, which is caused by a protoctistin called plasmodium. Okay, And we'll look at the life cycle of plasmodium in more detail. Okay, So in summary, we've got a definition of parasite and pathogen, uh, but we've also talked about the contention of those um, definitions and the similarities between parasites and pathogens. Um, <clears throat> And possibly the fact that uh, um, perhaps the definitions of these terms need to be tightened up, okay? Because there's also a lot of overlap between the idea of pathogen and parasite. But anyway, as far as you're concerned, you should know what the definition of each are, okay? Anyway, that that um, finishes our introductory um, screencast on the idea of health and disease and the yeah, things that cause diseases or the things that can cause infectious diseases.